Hey guys, Aaron Kupitz, personal trainer at Functional Aesthetics EC. Uh, today I want to take a moment to uh, go over a few common mistakes that a lot of guys make when they first start lifting. Um, so the first one we want to talk about today uh, would be going too hard and heavy right from the get-go. So, you know, let's face it, guys tend to be competitive. Um, they want, they, and we like to feel like we're working hard and we're getting strong. We can dominate, things like that. At least a lot of guys do. Um, so competition, you know, can be a good thing. I mean, that's why the world progresses, you know, uh, as we try to, uh, you know, in the process of competing against each other, um, we have to make better products and service and things like that. And as long as we're not cheating to do so and, you know, undercutting other people, you know, things become better over time because of this uh, need to compete and outdo each other. Um, however, when you go to the gym and you're, you know, working out and things like that, um, this competitiveness or lifting with your ego can be a bit of a problem. And, uh, so the reason for this is, you know, if you want to just go and lift heavy things, um, go get a manual labor job. But the purpose of doing uh, strength training is to provide a specific stress to specific muscles in order to create that uh, increase in size and strength. Um, yes, you can lift the weight up, but the point is not to just move the weight from point A to point B. It's also important how you're doing that. So if you are lifting a weight that you can't handle, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to have to compensate. And when you do this compensation, you're going to rely more heavily on the muscles that are already well developed, already stronger, more dominant, and you're going to completely neglect the muscles that are weaker. Um, so your progress and your increase in strength is going to be very limited. Uh, you'll probably not end up being very much stronger than you were at the beginning of your training because um, you're leaving a lot of muscles out and not training them, um, just going straight to the uh, muscles that are already strong. So another thing that can happen when you do this is you're going to create muscular imbalances. And these muscular imbalances uh, will cause your body uh, to potentially get injured and also limit force production um, and your strength potential in the future as well because your body has built-in mechanisms to prevent you from injuring yourself when the body gets too out of balance. So two things there. You can get injured and it also limit your strength potential. Another thing that can limit your strength potential is, you know, if you're going back to talking about, okay, we're skipping over certain muscle groups. So for example, if you're doing a pull-up and you're not uh, depressing your shoulder blades and uh, retracting them to initiate the movement, um, you are essentially leaving the lower trapezius, the rhomboids, and a lot of the other little back muscles out of the equation and relying uh, too heavily on your lats and your biceps and your forearms to move your weight up and down. Now the prime movers for a pull-up are essentially your lats and then your, uh, your uh, biceps do come into play as well. But if you can add more muscles to the equation, it's going to provide a stable base for these bigger muscles to play off of. And it's also going to help evenly distribute the load so that if you have more people, you know, like the saying, many hands makes the work light. If you have more muscles working on the same weight, it's going to be easier to lift it than if you're just lifting, you know, one thing at once. So, um, now let's say if you do take the time to develop your strength um, appropriately and to you know learn proper techniques so that you are utilizing the proper muscles when you're lifting the weight um, and you build up to a respectable weight, even then you don't want to continue lifting as hard and heavy as you can all the time. You want to cycle between different phases of training. Now you'll have one primary focus depending on whatever your your thing is you know if you're a bodybuilder you're going to spend most of your time training in that moderate rep and load range if you're an endurance athlete you're going to spend more time you know training for endurance but all of these athletes and the general person should rotate between different training methodologies periodically so for example if you're a triathlete 
um, and you're training predominantly for muscular endurance most of the time, you know, every few months or so, you might want to take a month and train for strength. And <clears throat> what this is going to do uh, is that, like, because strength training is not highly correlated with an increase in muscular size. So as long as you are not, you know, eating a calorie surplus, um, you're not going to make <clears throat> measurable uh, increases in size and weight if that's what you're concerned about by lifting heavier weights. But what it will do is if you maintain the same weight that you were at, but you increase the amount of weight that you're able to lift, your uh, speed in your running and your biking and your swimming is going to improve, thus making you a better uh, athlete in your sport. Same thing for bodybuilders. So bodybuilders mainly train in that moderate rep range um, and the moderate uh, load, you know, usually about 60 to 70% of your one repetition maximum uh, performed for anywhere between, you know, eight to 12 repetitions is typically what, you know, is the, you know, gold standard for bodybuilding type stuff, but you can fall, you know, obviously fall outside of that range as well is like what I'm going to talk about here, you know, cause like maybe you want to take a month every, you know, three to four months or something like that and just train, you know, do like power building, you know, uh, do power lifting routines where you're training more strength. So lower repetitions, maybe one to f between one to five repetitions per set at, you know, 85 to, you know, 90, 95% of your one repetition maximum. And that can, uh, help you out there because you know the key determiner of muscular growth is time under tension however there are other factors involved as i've talked about in other videos and one of those is mechanical overload which is definitely achieved by lifting heavier weights so for the average person you want to cycle through you know four different training phases you want to you'd be working on you know muscular endurance sometimes other times you want to be working on the hypertrophy or building muscle and then uh you want to be working on building strength at times and then uh, once you've gone through all three of those phases you can start working on power which is you know light to moderate weights moved very rapidly so examples of this would be like the clean and the snatch and olympic lifting doing sprinting box jumps plyometrics things like that those will all be like power type movements um, that you can do and those are especially important for athletes but even the general population once you've trained for endurance strength and hypertrophy and strength can even dabble a little bit in those as well um provided they do them smart um and then, like, as I said, you know, like, so maybe once every month you can try a week of just training a different sort of uh, muscular or different sort of strength goal. And then, you know, every couple months, maybe take an entire week off and just, you know, do uh, stay active, but don't do any serious kind of training. And this will allow your nervous system and your muscles and everything like that to recover from all the pushing that you've been doing so that you can come back stronger now that you're refreshed and recovered. Um, always pushing is never a good idea, although it sounds very glamorous. So uh, I hope, oh, one other thing, uh, a couple of years ago, I created a hybrid strength program, which actually blends all of these different phases together uh, very nicely so that you always stay fresh, you never get bored with your workouts, and you never get burnt out from your workouts. If you'd like to learn more about that, you can uh, send me a uh, DM and, uh, we can talk, discuss that a little bit further, but uh, in the meantime, we'll uh, see you all later and talk to you next week. Bye.